Hello, and welcome back to another Brainstream. Before we get into it and continuing with the operating system of the future, I just want to just touch upon iOS animations. Like, who is their new animator? What they've done from iOS 17 and the new Siri animations, I really hope I don't set off my personal assistant too much this video, but the animations are unreal. For anyone using an iPhone, have you ever tried name drop, like connecting your contacts when you bring two iPhones or the new ones together? And they do this animation where they send the contact details from one phone to another to share them. I mean, I wish they brought that to airdrop better and uh, sharing Wi-Fi passwords, so many more things. But like that animation was sick. It was so great. And now with Siri, the it's just my mock-ups right now with the Siri wallpaper is just static and I just can't wait until I actually animate it. But you do yourself a favor and go check out the animations because they are phenomenal. Like just the way it makes the wall, like the, the screen, it looks like it's rippling and it's, um, and it's, it's basically like not in your face. It's allowing you to use the phone, um, but still showing you that Siri's listening and, and available. Um, the thing I really like about it is actually very similar. Like there's a feature right now um, where you can ask Siri a question on what's happening on your wallpaper, on your, on your, on your screen. So it's kind of similar to being able to upload a screenshot to ChatGPT and then ask questions, which I use a lot and it's quite, it's, it's, it's quite powerful and it's quite interesting. Um, I wish it went on more to like videos and not just, well, it does that, but like a lot more context behind it. And this feature is one of those features that is like, I released in my iOS 18 like wishlist, but it's not built out the way that I would like it, but I can so see it being like started off. Um, I'm going to give like another 30 seconds for this because it's just mind blowing. Those animations so beautiful. Um, but basically the feature that I put in was teach me mode. And this idea that not only can you use conversation to control um, and, and create bigger automations, right? Create shortcuts and then um, bigger automations or intents or wherever wording we're going to be using for that. Um, you could use your home screen to teach uh, your personal assistant of what you are showing. Like if you do something constantly, if you could not only explain it, but also video record like yourself doing this motion, like pressing certain buttons, taking certain actions uh, and explain the intent behind it. Imagine that like screen recording type of thing, but like seeing what's on the screen, but learning from the actions that you're doing, not just, not just a flat screen recording, or not just a flat picture, but the actions, the buttons you're pressing, the, 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 the entire flow that you're doing, and then learning that and be able to create a shortcut and create an automation, but also create one where it under, it doesn't have to do that specifically. It, it gets the context of you explaining what you want. So it can understand, okay, you did that action and we want to do something similar. I'm like thinking like, you know, posting a, a, you know, something to LinkedIn or scheduling something up. It doesn't have to be that specific button, but understanding what that button does and understanding the bigger context of what you wanted to do could create these crazy, crazy um, automations. And so th that, that idea I call teach me mode or like, you know, this idea that you can just say, hey, Siri, watch this, you know, watch me, you know, learn from me, whatever, and, and have a screen recording and also a voice recording to be able to create this like really powerful automations would be absolutely insane. Um, and I see that animation already with Siri in the, in the, in the, um, on the border and be able to understand, like to answer a question, what's on the screen right there. Like it takes kind of like a screenshot, but I cannot wait until we can have that actual, um, full on flow and all that things. Anyways, um, that's my small little thing on the automations. Absolutely love it. Um, Apple, in my opinion, has knocked that out of the park and I am, so interested to see how they move because the last couple of years have always been, you know, been about micro animations and these just small things. And Apple has been always amazing at those micro animations to be able to explain and show what different um, features, like what different UIs like do um, and where they go and hierarchy, things like that. Um, but to see these new animations from starting from last year, from iOS 17 and just continuing to this year, absolutely phenomenal. Um, so curious to see what they come in next. But anyways, to continue this, I was listening to a podcast on um, some people discussing about augmented reality and, and glasses and the, the, the difference between, it's interesting, one of the panels actually um, 
he was using the term, I, I use the term augmented reality or real augment, true augmented reality and then pseudo augmented reality, which is the idea of vision pass through, which is kind of like what Apple has on the Vision Pro for an example, where if you really want to look at it, it's a, it's a virtual reality headset that has amazing vision pass through that gives you kind of that augmented reality, hence pseudo augmented reality. He uses the terms optical augmented reality and pass through augmented reality for that. So optical augmented reality is when you see the real world, what I call true augmented reality, and uh, pass through augmented reality is what I call tr uh, pseudo augmented reality. Um, Anyways, uh, they were discussing this idea of like a new user interface. They touched upon like humane pin and like these ideas of like why did those systems fail. Um, made very good points that you know there's not just one specific company or one specific um, um, form factor that's going to like kind of destroy everyone else. Uh, it's going to be a bunch of different styles that are all going to work amazingly well together. Not just like syncing, but like the way that they work together, the way they sync together is just going to be almost as if they are the same device. Not how like iCloud works nowadays, which it's okay with syncing, but it's, you cannot mistake the iPhone and your, and, and your, and your computer to be the same device. Like, and that to me is like, that is one of the downsides. I mean, Apple connects them amazingly and I'm going off into a different tangent, but like, um, wow, we're already at six minutes. Um, the, the, the next point is like literally make them feel a different device, w the same device. When I put on, when I take a photo on my, on my camera, I want that photo to be available on my photo roll. If I've got iCloud or if I want them to be together, I want that instantly on my computer. Like we're talking about in today's day and age. Um, and the idea that you have to have great Wi-Fi and you have to have, um, and waiting for the photo syncing to happen in the background, it can take a while. And sometimes you have to force it, especially with battery. But why can't you use these new things with AirDrop? The AirDrop transfers files tremendously, like really, really fast. And they're not just using Wi-Fi, they're using Bluetooth. And like, there's so many new versions like BLE, there's Wi-Fi Direct, there's Matter, there's all these different things that can be built in to make the connection between your two devices insanely fast that almost you, 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 you forget that they are one device. The idea of like me moving devices between um, files between devices is still not amazing. And I'm really looking forward to this iPhone mirroring on the MacBook and to see how that helps me with files. And it'll be very interesting to see how I can actually get things done when I'm really needing the power of the desktop and the applications that have been built better for the desktop than the mobile and see how that file sharing between them. Cause you know, I almost, I, I, I always want to like get a file and like scoop it to my Mac. And you could do that with AirDrop and there's different like variations of doing that. But like, it's like when you have an iPad and a, a mouse, you can, a, a, and a keyboard, and a, an iPad and a MacBook, you can use the keyboard to connect them together and you universal keyboard, you can drag files between them, but like I can't do it with my phone, for example. So it would be interesting to see iPhone mirroring. I'd love to see better connection between the files so they work better. Um, funnily enough today, we didn't actually get to talk a lot on um, what I wanted to talk about, but I, th I think we can end off with this idea of like, um, what is the best user interface? And in, in, in the podcast I was just listening to, uh, I think it's called the AR Show, a great name because I wanted to call my podcast that. And so I found that was taken just before uh, I got to it. Um, but anyways, they were talking about this idea of like, oh, conversation, you need UI. You can't just, conversation, you can't like easily look back in the past. And that is so true. The voice user interface does not work necessarily separate from the graphics. When I'm showing the voice interface, it's, it's definitely going to work with the visuals, right? And it will work with the glasses. Like smartphone is very powerful and therefore we're going to be working with a smartphone nowadays. Um, it's not going to be by itself, but you have to give power and understand that there's certain things that the visuals are also not necessarily good at. A conversation, I can create an automation by the power of my voice in seconds where to do that automation in current visual um, GUIs in, in, into user interfaces the way they're designed today is really, really cumbersome. And be able to explain that with all the context with my voice is Im immense power that the, the, the graphic user interface doesn't have. Likewise, to look at a body of text and to know what I said um, two paragraphs before is very, very hard with voice. Um, I'd have to go and um, prompt it and ask, hey, what did it say? And to scrub and to do those type of things, very difficult visual, very easy. So it's definitely going to be a mashup between them. But like I'm saying, nowadays it's like 99 to one in the, the visual and the voice has nothing. The voice needs to become powered until like, it needs to rec reclaim like 20% of it. And the power of the voice is gonna be massive where the visual is not good at. And so that's where this new operating system comes in and this vision of layer OS or whatever name we're gonna go into and actually choose on um, is super interesting. It's a super interesting conversation. And, and I think that this, 
uh, project will be super interesting to see where we get to because it's very, very complex. Anyways, that's it for today. I will see you guys in the future.